A crime or an act of war? Interrogation or torture? Trial or travesty? The world chooses its words. Next on Global Pulse. A comparison of how broadcasters worldwide are covering this story. Aggressive interrogation techniques. Asfixia simulada. Waterboarding. Torture, lies and obfuscation. Justice. Within a week, the U.S. government admitted to waterboarding key suspects in the 9-11 attacks and announced their trials United by military America, tribunal. Which occurred on September the 11th, 2001. The BBC framed the trial announcement sympathetically to the U.S. September the 11th, 2001 is etched on the consciousness of an American generation. It was a crime which caused death and injury on a massive scale, but also left mental scars on a nation that had felt safe and will never feel safe again. 9-11 led directly to wars, to retribution, and now, according to the White House, to justice. Spain's TVE was more straightforward. It is called simulated suffocation, and it consists of putting a person underwater to simulate drowning. It is a torture method, and that is why the American prosecutors know that it could be a problem to use as proof. Even so, they will demand capital punishment for those directly implicated in the 9-11 attacks. In the U.S., NBC News aired criticism of the government. CIA Director General Michael Hayden announced publicly only last week that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed had been subjected to waterboarding, which many consider to be torture. That includes Air Force Colonel Morris Davis. As long as we insist on using evidence that was obtained by waterboarding, a process that most everyone is willing to say uh, constitutes torture, uh, this is just not an American uh, system of justice. By contrast, Fox News featured the government's case. For the first time, these high-value Guantanamo detainees will have the right to hire a civilian attorney. They will also be allowed to appeal the final military commission judgment all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. There will be no secret trials. Every piece of evidence, every stitch of evidence, every whiff of evidence that goes to the finder of fact, to the jury, to the military tribunal, will be reviewed by the accused. Most of the accused were held in CIA secret prisons overseas, and at least two were subjected to so-called aggressive interrogation techniques. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who admitted planning the 9-11 attack from A to Z, was waterboarded. Broadcasters from Muslim nations emphasized a different set of words as these reports from Qatar's Al Jazeera English and Iran's Press TV illustrate. Amnesty International demands a criminal probe into the CIA's use of waterboarding after months of, well, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, uh, lies and obfuscation. It's finally out in the open. The United States, on the authority of Bush and Cheney, does waterboard prisoners. Anyone who's really following the events, who realizes that the Bush administration has been engaged in a pattern of torture. The announcement of charges comes amid controversy that U.S. interrogators used waterboarding on Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. The method of tying a suspect down and pouring water over their cloth-covered face to simulate drowning has since been banned. The actual trials are set to be held at a specially constructed court in Guantanamo Bay. But the jury's already out on whether the 9-11 suspects will really get a fair hearing. In the military commission system, there's no right to confront witnesses against you. That is to say, hearsay evidence, written evidence, any, anything can come in as long as the military judge in his own discretion thinks that it's reliable. What you call it will matter. If not in the trials, then in public opinion, in the U.S. and around the world. This is Aaron Coker for Global Pulse. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non commercial use only. Link TV is the only US network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world.